This is part one of a seminar I gave at the 2015 Sportsman Show in Puyallup, Washington. This seminar covers drift fishing and float fishing beads and is an introduction to those who are new to bead fishing. Bead fishing has grown in popularity and is very effective for both steelhead and salmon. Here in part one, I'll talk about the equipment needed to drift fish beads. Today we're going to talk about drift fishing beads and float fishing beads. Now a lot of people, I've had quite a few people sending me messages, drift fishing beads? Yeah, you can drift fish beads if you get the right beads. Specifically today, I'm going to talk about steelhead beads. Okay, and there are beads and a lot of beads out on the market. I'll touch on some others, but you can find these at steelheadbeads.com. Okay, the reason I finish these is because of the neutral buoyancy. Okay, so they're not heavy like heavy beads. And we'll, we'll get into that here shortly. So, I like to be interactive. If you guys have questions, you talk to me, all right? It's a discussion, okay? I'm gonna show you some setup techniques. We're gonna talk about how to fish them so that you can be successful. What is a steelhead bead? Really, what kind of presentation are we fishing? One word for it, anybody. What's that? An egg imitation, yes, and so, Fish go up into the river and they spawn, right? Well, they don't spawn egg sacs or clusters of eggs, right? They spawn single eggs. And those eggs end up drifting down the river. Not all of them make it, right? So they're drifting down the river. It's a very small presentation. I like to call it a finesse presentation. That's what it is. It's finesse. Bass anglers use it. Walleye anglers use it. When the big stuff isn't working, they go small, they go light, right? So that's what bead fishing really is. And it really started with guys with center pin reels, you know, casting way out there, long drifts. But you can do this with spinning gear. Now, if you were a bait caster kind of guy, could you do it? Yeah, I mean, if you've really got that cast down, you could do it. But really, if you want to be successful, you want to do uh, use a spinning reel. Now, for those of you that were here and listened to Scott Haugen, he had a really good point at the beginning of his presentation. And, it, and that is, we used to go down to the river with one rod. We didn't have all these specialty rods. But we do have the specialty rods now and you should take advantage of that. You don't need to have six of the same like I do, but you do need to have some rods that are gonna work for you. So we're gonna jump into drift fishing first, and I'm gonna talk about equipment, and the equipment that I'm gonna show you for drift fishing, you can use for float fishing. They have specific rods for float fishing, but you can get away with drift fishing or float fishing with your drift fishing rod. So let's talk about our rod. So I fish St. Croix rods. This is an Avid series, Avid series, and it's a light to medium action rod. If you look on the side of the rod, it says moderate action. It's a nine foot six light power, and it will hold, handle four to eight pound test line. Now I fudge on the line a little bit because this is the rod I want to fish. Now, could I get a specific rod for beads? Yes. Could I fish a fast action rod? Yes. But now you go back to, I've got all these rods to do all these specific things. This rod, my clients and I can cast egg clusters, right? We fish eggs. You guys fish them, I fish them, I like eggs. But well, sometimes eggs don't work. And when I need to change it up, I want to be able to have a rod that I can change it up and go to without having a specialty rod. 
I can only fit so many rods in my boat. So this rod, this power, I can cast and it's not gonna throw the eggs off. If you're using a faster action rod, the eggs are gonna come flying off your rod. You're like, yeah, I'm never gonna get out there, right? Okay, so nine foot six, light action. You wanna match it with a reel that balances, okay? Real manufacturers have different model names and numbers for everything. A 2500 series spinning reel is about the right size. The Daiwa Shimano, a few other brands have those size reels. I fish the Fluger Supreme mostly because I like the line capacity on it and it's a phenomenal reel for me, okay? All right, so we've got our rod and reel balanced out. I need some main line on there. Remember I said the rod says that it's supposed to handle four to eight pound test. I fish 10, 10. Now I'm in a boat. You guys that are on the bank, and I do some bank fishing, you don't want to fish 10 pound main line unless you have unabridged access up and down the bank, right? There's times we go down there and he's there, I'm here, he's over there. We're too close to each other. We can't just take off running down the river. Or maybe it's limited access, right? You just can't physically go down river. You need to hold that fish in. So up your line weight to the 12 pound test, okay? 12 pound. You'll notice I have mono on here. I don't fish braided line drift fishing. I don't. We, we break off, we snag up, we get in what I like to refer to as botanical obstructions. And if you have to cut that line, that's a lot of braided line in the river. I float fish it, but not drift fishing, okay? Now we get to our leaders. If you're fishing 10 pound main line, you should be fishing eight pound leaders. Drop two pounds. If you're fishing 12 pound main line, we're gonna be fishing 10 pound leaders, okay? Tie all your leaders up before you get out there. Unless you're float fishing, you're gonna use fluorocarbon. And if you wanna tie all of your leaders in fluorocarbon, that's awesome, knock yourself out, okay? I don't use fluorocarbon for my drift fishing. I'm just using Iserline eight pound, okay? But we gotta get our leaders to our main line. And I think this is important, and I think that you guys should really focus on your terminal tackle. Balancing your gear is important. And so when I see guys fishing, and they're drift fishing, and they're reeling their gear back, and this leader is wrapped all up around the main line, that's happening because it's hinging. And usually the hinging occurs because the terminal tackle you put on is too big. It's too big. So balance it out. I use size 10 terminal tackle. You guys can see that's pretty small. Now, I use vision hooks and tackle, and I really like the consistency. I like the breaking strength. It's like 48 pounds static. Well, we're not fishing static. We're fishing a dynamic system, right? So I don't have to worry about losing fish because of my terminal tackle. But if you go out and you buy, say, Danielson barrel swivels or crane swivels, those swivels are a different size. A size 10, it's much bigger. What you don't want to do on a system like this is fish number sevens. They're too big. And I know what happens because I pull this gear out of the river all the time. All the time. So, size 10 barrel swivels. The next thing I do want to touch on, as I've been asked almost every day, is can I fish a fixed weight system? Yes, you can. You'll notice I've got a weight here. I'm using a snap swivel. Can you do a three-way and have fixed weight? Because that's what we used to do. Is there anything wrong with it? No, you can do that. But here's the deal. I fish the sliding because if this gets hung up, like at the moment I'm going to net a fish, but the fish doesn't get in the net or he splashes out and the weight's stuck on the net, I want that fish to be able to run. I don't want to lose my fish because the weight is hung up on the net. 
Likewise, if he gets into some trees like this or some limbs and that weight hangs up, I want that weight to try and work its way out, but I want that fish to be able to run. I don't want to put that pressure on and break it. All right? So that's why I fish sliding systems. Let's touch on weight real quick. I think that the amount of weight that you use is critical. You're going to find that if you drip fish, cheaters and yarn, egg clusters, sand shrimp, you know, whatever you like to drip fish, you're not going to use as much weight to fish a bead. These don't weigh anything. Okay, they're not heavy beads. We're fishing a neutral buoyant bead. So you're going to find that you're going to go a lot lighter on your weight. You need to be consistent in your weight so you know. Like if you're out there fishing, you know, am I using a one inch piece of pencil lead? Am I using one and a half? What's it take to drift and tick across this drift? When you're fishing the bead setup, you should feel a tick of the weight about every six to eight feet as you're drifting through the hole. Six to eight feet. You shouldn't be feeling your weight going, right? Or literally just dragging across. You don't want to feel that because on these beads, you want the current of the water to move this bead around. It's going to make it float. It's going to go over here. It's going to go over there. And this is a pretty light colored bead for you guys to see. And the current in here isn't the best, but that's going to go all over the place. It's going to move around. If the weight is dragging on the bottom, the bead's going to lay over because the current's going to push it down. You need to rely on the hydraulics of the river, right? And in the river, we've got rocks and stumps and trees and all of this stuff. And so as that river comes down, it's, it's pushing water up. It's pushing it sideways. If the weight is constantly on the bottom, tick, 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 that bead's pushing down and over. So just tick across the bottom every six to eight feet, okay? For consistency in your lead, yes, sir. No, you don't want to, listen, the drift is only going to be as fast as the current is running, right? It's only going to be as fast as the current is running. And so the question is, is using less weight going to make the drift go faster? Okay. It's going to go as fast as the, as the current is. But you got to remember you're fishing a finesse presentation. It's not like eggs that weigh more and have more volume with a corky or a cheater in there to kind of give them a little, that corky and cheater helps those eggs get more neutral buoyant, buoyancy in the water, right? Eggs have some buoyancy as it is. I mean, well, you throw eggs in the water and they sink the bottom, sure, the current will push them around, but that cheater or that corky is going to cause those eggs to kind of move around. That's why egg fishing is so great, right? This is like no weight. Throw one of these beads on a scale and it doesn't even register. It doesn't even say a gram because it, they're so light. So you have to lighten that up. I like six to eight feet. It's been very successful. It's worked very well for me. If you want to experiment with it, maybe you're going to bounce every three to five feet. But you really need to try and get an eye on what that bead is doing because if if the weight hits and drags, the bead's going to lay over and you're going to hang up. Okay? Even when we're free drifting, if you guys have a sled and you're in the river and you're on free drifting these beads, you want to feel that tick. I like it about every six to eight feet. Okay? Now I'm fishing. Now I'm being effective. So really quick back on the lead. You guys need to measure and cut your lead consistently, okay? I cut all my lead, I start at one inch, and I work my way up all the way to two inches of lead, all right? I make sure that the whole, and here shortly when you, we're done, you come up and look at some of the lead I've got. I like that hole for my pencil lead to be right at the edge, so if that hangs up, 
it breaks the lead off and not my whole setup. Okay? I use a machine to cut my lead. Cowlitz River sells, and in fact, I was talking to someone here today about a lead cutter. Uh, that, they're not cheap, but they're actually on sale right now, 150 bucks. You can cut all the lead you want. Just cut it all up, it's ready to go. All right, so be consistent on your lead cutting. So let's take a look at what's going on with this bead here on my grip fishing setup. This bead is pegged. I can move it, but it's gonna stay there. Now, let's think about how simple you, or how easy it is for you to get into drift fishing beads. If you've already got one of these and you go drift fishing, you're like 90% there. All you gotta do is get some beads, Grab some toothpicks, non-flavored, don't want spearmint, and go and fish. That's all you need. Okay? Buy one extra thing. All the other stuff is the same. If you're drift fishing now, everything's the same. Now, I don't like toothpicks. Toothpick hits the water, swells up, it's hard to get it out of the bead. Unless you're just throwing your beads away. I like to save. If, if, if they're good, I'm going to save them. Right? So... Here are some options for you. That wraps it up for part one. Make sure you move on to part two, where we will finish the drift fishing portion of this seminar. We will finish talking about equipment, including pegging beads, bead size, scent, where to fish, and more.